Uh, this is another assembly problem uh, which is similar to what was done in chapter 6 but in the context of a, uh, of a uh, uh, part. Okay? And later on this problem was also done with, uh, with beam elements. So what we like to do here is to uh, repeat that problem except that uh, it is almost like that chapter because in, the, in, the other, in, the, in that chapter the top faces of the pin and the top the faces of the top pin, the two end faces of the top pin were clamped, and we would push the, the C-clamp down by some amount. Here, uh, because the two pins are pushed in opposite direction by some amount, we actually have uh, two planes of symmetry, okay, instead of one that we had in the earlier chapter, chapter six, okay? I'm not gonna worry about uh, making, uh, I'm not, not gonna worry about making the, uh, uh, the dimensions of the, the C-clamp itself uh, important, except that once I create it, then I'm going to apply some displacement to the top and the bottom. Okay, so let's go to uh, uh, Katia. So immediately we save, uh, we save this uh, assembly, uh, save as. So uh, desktop, new folder, I'll call it C-clamp, C-clamp. Okay, with assembly as an assembly. Okay, assembly. <clears throat> All right. Now I'm going to make the entire assembly and then cut it with a saw. Although it's possible for you to uh, to make the dimensions uh, as they're supposed to be after the cut, but I'll make the whole thing and then cut it as needed. So file. Uh, sorry, insert. Insert new part in there. So I will call it the clamp itself. Right click, properties. Okay, so that's gonna be clamp. Or the C clamp if you want. Clamp and clamp. Okay. And uh, let's make it. So uh, let's go into part design on a convenient plane, on that vertical plane, I will sketch. Uh, something that looks like the C clamp that I had in the in the figure, and I will uh, just put one dimension there, just so that we have an idea of how big these things are. Okay. Okay. Wrap it around. Go there. And there. Okay. So uh, this line control. Uh, uh, this line control that line control the middle axis. Let's make it symmetric. Okay. Uh, top line control bottom line control middle axis also symmetric. I think actually it's already symmetric. Yeah. Good. Okay. So now we're going to let me let me put a dimension here just so that so that we have a rough idea how big these things are. Okay, so this is almost five inches. It's almost five inches, and obviously this one is almost one and a half. Very good. So let's uh, make the the place uh, where we want to insert the pin. It's right there. Uh, you can you can you can make it symmetric halfway between these two, but that's not the issue here. But I would like to mirror this with respect to that, so that we have both. Uh, Holes at the same time, and then we're going to do a mirror extent, uh, maybe half an inch in each direction. So the whole thickness is going to be uh, uh, one inch. Okay, uh, save it. Go to the assembly, assembly level. Save everything. All right, and then we're going to insert, insert a new part, and I'll call it top pin. Properties, <coughs> top pin, and top pin. Uh, let's make it uh, on a convenient plane, on that uh, vertical plane. I will sketch. Why don't I project that circle? Okay, exit. Pad it. In both direction. Let me make it one to see how it looks like. 
Well, actually, I'll make it one and a half. One, one point five. One point five. Okay. Very good. And uh, back to the assembly. Save everything. And now we insert the bottom pin. So insert new part. Call it the bottom pin. Properties. Bottom pin. Bottom pin and bottom pin. Okay, uh, let's make it exactly the same pin. In fact, I could have saved this. I could have saved this, and I did. And I can use, I uh, can say, uh, uh, insert the existing component and use this pin to insert it down here, but uh, it's just as easy to make it. So on a convenient plane, on that vertical plane, I will sketch one more projection. There we are. Exit. Add it. In both directions, which means mirror extent by a length of 1.5, we get something identical to what we have uh, above it. Okay, good. So let's go here and save. Now remember, the plan is that you take these, this, the, the end of this pin and the other side, push it up by point, uh, point 0.005 and do the same thing uh, to these bottom pins and push it down. Therefore, there are two planes of symmetry here. X, Y is a plane of symmetry and Y, Z is a plane of symmetry. So when you're in assembly, use the saw here, right there, split. Okay, and then select the plane that you want to cut it with, this one, and affect all of them. It's going to look like that. And then cut it horizontally. So uh, uh, once again, split with that horizontal one. Affect all of them. Keep the top part. And there we are. Okay, very good. Uh, why don't we apply... Uh, apply uh, uh, properties of steel to this entire assembly. So apply material, uh, metal, steel on the entire assembly. So everybody is going to inherit that. Save it. And then go to generative structure analysis. I would like to uh, emphasize again that if you knew what your strategy was going to be, you could have created these parts exactly like they are without actually making the whole thing and started from this point. All right, so let's see. Uh, this is a surface slider. Is the surface slider here. Okay. Uh, a surface slider on that face and a surface slider on this face of the pin. Half, half of the pin. Okay, good. I would like to make the uh, dimension of this uh, clamp itself, the size of the element of the clamp, a little bit smaller, maybe 0.1, see what it looks like, but still linear. Okay, very good. Uh, I'll keep the pin the same. Now, we want to take this face and push it up by 0.005. 0 0.005. Please do not divide this thing. Uh, by, 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 by 2, okay? If you see displacement, the displacement is 0.005. So first we make it 0, so user defined uh, on that face upward, which means direction Z, and now we can go and change it. So where is it? Uh, let's see, enforced displacement. This is under load. So that restraint that I just created. If it's hard to, uh, and if it's hard, you can pick it and you don't want to zoom in, you can always select it from the tree, which this is okay. So I'm going to make it 0 0.005 as specified in the problem statement. Very good. Now, keep in mind that unless I create a connection between these two and call it contact connection, this will fall apart. As a matter of fact, uh, if I run it now, this will go through that block or through the clamp. So let me make the connections for you. So general analysis connection. First component is the surface of the pin. For the second component, I hide the pin and select the surface of uh, the hole here. Okay. And that connection has been created. And this is going to be contact. Do not make it fasten. Because if these were actually pins and bought and they were not glued together, 
and glued together means it was not glued to the surface of the hole or uh, welded to the surface of the hole or it, if, if it was machined like that with a hole sticking out with, with a pin sticking out then this must be contact. Do not use fasten unless the problem that you're given warrants that or you're specific told to use fasten. So there is contact, face-to-face -face connection contact. You can select this or you can select this red, red line from the screen. Do not fool around with the clearance and friction ratio and no sliding because in all likelihood you know what you're doing and uh, I haven't taught you that, okay? Uh, right now we're doing some basic stuff. No friction, no sliding, uh, no use of no sliding option, etc. All right, so where's my pin? The pin is over here. Now, it looks like everything is okay, but when you run it, you'll see that the, the program will actually terminate because there's something not done yet. Ignore the warning. Right. And if I animate this thing, you will see that this whole thing, this whole clamp and the pin will actually move in the YZ plane because there's nothing to keep it in the YZ plane. Okay, we can see that. And let me animate it. See, it is moving in the YZ plane as a rigid body. So what you need to do, you have to take one point, just one point of the clamp when I say 1.1, one, uh, uh, one of these corner points, and say, hey, you do not move, do not move in the Y direction. Okay, so uh, this is going to be the additional restraint that I'm going to put in the Y direction is direction 2, uncheck that, and select a corner point. It makes absolutely no difference which one you pick. You can see what happened. Here is the, here is the fixing of that. Uh, uh, of that corner point and uh, let me by the way save my stuff here file save management save analysis because the part and the assemblies are already saved c clamp very good okay and then uh, run it okay so uh, Double click, change the scale to default. There we are. And animate it. This is exactly the way it's supposed to be, behave. Okay? And if you look at the, uh, if you look at the, uh, the von Mises stress, for example, let me change the rendering here to material shading. And uh, if we trust these numbers, the biggest stress seems to be ha happening uh, in this area. Now, by the way, notice that here uh, the element edges are not showing. If you want the element edges to show up, you have to change the rendering here. You go to, for example, uh, right here. So you go there with that very last one, customized view parameters, and notice that now they do show up. Okay? Uh, don't let numbers fool you. Always don't let colors fool you. Always look at your uh, values so these are uh, roughly 8000 psi and this was still 8000 psi is fairly low uh, so uh, and uh, there is your uh, uh, displacement obviously I push this pin up by uh, thousand, uh, 0 0.005 inch you can see that now in the event that you're asked to find to find how much force is needed to cause this deformation, this deformation means how much force is needed to pull this thing up and this thing down by 0.05. So you need to create, first of all, let's deactivate this. All right, so uh, you go to the sensor, right click, create resultant sensor, reaction sensor, and then select the, uh, the restraint uh, here. Look, you can either select uh, the restraint that you put on this circular face to push it up or the restraint on the slider surface. Uh, now, the problem is that, no, never mind about slider one because I mixed them all. All three of them are in the same, uh, same, uh, same command. So, no, no, you go there, okay? And 
update. So, the answer that you write in your, in your exam paper is double of that, because this side is modeled, the other side, the mirror of it with respect to YZ is not modeled. So to pull that entire half clamp up, you need almost uh, 400 pounds, okay? And don't forget to say okay, because if you cancel this, then when you submit your work, there's no way for us to know where you got that even correct answer from. However, if you say okay, it's recorded in the tree and uh, you're good. All right, folks. Take care. <laughs>